Shalom and good morning. Today is Tisha B'Av, the ninth day in the month of Av of the Hebrew calendar. Now, this day is not in the Bible as a sacred festival or feast, but it has certainly become a very important day in the history of the Jewish people and in uh, the life of Judaism and in the memory of God's ancient people and also for the church, for those that are sensitive to the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. So what makes this day uh, so special? Well, this day is the saddest day in Jewish tradition and in the Jewish calendar. It marks a series of tragedies that have occurred through the history of the Jewish people that all seem to culminate on this day. So traditionally, according to uh, uh, rabbinical interpretation, the ninth of Av was the day that Moses declares that the people of Israel are doomed to wander the wilderness for the next 40 years for being unfaithful in, in uh, listening to the spies' report. According to tradition, this is also the day where Aaron, the high priest, the first high priest of God, died. And he was so special to the Jewish people that in the text, in the book of Numbers, it records that when he died, all Israel mourned. They, they really appreciated his intercession on their behalf. And other tragedies occurred, the expulsions from Spain, from England, and the, the, the final solution by the Nazi war machine, which was decided uh, according to tradition on, on this day. But what really cements this day as a, as a source of national tragedy and a day for remembrance for Jewish people, and I've said for also for Christians who really appreciate the Jewish roots of the Christian faith, this day marks the destruction of both temples, the Temple of Solomon and the Second Temple of Zerubbabel and King Herod. They were both destroyed on this day, the 9th of Av. What was so special about Jerusalem? Well, it was the temple. Without the temple, then this city is just another provincial town in all of the other cities and towns of Judah and Samaria and the Galilee. Uh, there's nothing else here. There's no major mining center. There's no commercial trade. It is a spiritual hub because God chose to put his name here. Moses in Deuteronomy, when he is uh, talking to the people of Israel as they are about to uh, enter the, the land of Canaan, says there's a special place where God will choose, where he will put his name, and that is Jerusalem. And in, and in an incredible uh, amount of humility, God chooses to live and reside with his people based around a temple. It was incredible. The temple was a place where heaven and earth meet. You could go to Jerusalem and you could know full well, this is where I'm going to meet with the Lord. His priests will be there. His worshippers will be there. I will sing and I will dance and I will delight. I will sacrifice and my family will learn uh, about God. And that was destroyed and taken away and has yet to be rebuilt. The temple was also meant to be a house of prayer for all nations. So it wasn't just a temple for Jewish people, but for everyone. So today... There are some of the traditions that have come up about uh, uh, in, in the life of Jewish people. We, uh, we don't wear new clothing, we wear plain clothing. We don't bathe. There's no personal grooming. No one shaves. It's a day simply of fasting and reading the Bible. In particular, you stop your normal reading of Bible and read the book of Lamentations. So when we think about um, what we've done. I wanted to con read just a few verses from the Book of Lamentations itself, beginning very simply in, uh, in, 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 in uh, chapter 1, Lamentations chapter 1, verse 8. Jerusalem has sinned greatly, and so she has become unclean. It's an interesting phrase to say. I know 
the Bible is often poetry, and so we, we unpack the poetic uh, sentence. Jerusalem has sinned. Can a city of stone sin? The people have sinned. We have sinned. What is it that we did? God was present in Jerusalem. People would come to this place. But at the same time that God was present in this place, this also was a place of, of corruption. The poor were being stolen from in Jerusalem. This was a city where the children were being sacrificed to a fire god called Moloch. And uh, the elderly, which should have been venerated and their wisdom appreciated, were being despised by the people. God was present, and at the same time, we have corruption. The worst form of corruption is religious corruption. And so in great tragedy, God left the temple, and, uh, and the temple was destroyed. And so on this day, as part of the reading, we remember, we need to remember what happened. And memory, as we've said before, means doing something now in action. Memory isn't linked to forgetfulness, where you forget uh, where you put your shoes or where you put your car keys, but memory is linked to doing something. For example, in chapter 5 of Lamentations, remember, Lord. Doesn't that mean that God forgets? No. Remember, Lord, and now act. Remember what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace and then bring restoration. Chapter 5 is a, is a chapter about restoration in verse 19. You, Lord, reign forever. He is a king. This is a great day to contemplate the majesty, the power, and the sovereignty of the Lord. Your throne endures from generation to generation. It is not going to change. Whether there's a destruction of the temple or whether there's a rebuilt temple, whether his children have been scattered or whether they have been exiled, whether the gospel has gone around the nations or whether people are persecuting the church, the Lord still reigns from generation to generation. Verse 21, restore us to yourself. Hashivenu says return us to yourself lord that we may return neshuva we will return and renew our days of old now these words restore and return both come from the same shoresh to repent so we take this day to contemplate that we have sinned and then we take the opportunity to repent I wanted to highlight that this is not just individual repentance, but it's also a community repentance. It's not just I have sinned and then the temple was destroyed. It's we have sinned as a community. Jerusalem, my part in it. Even Daniel, when he prayed in Daniel chapter 2, he declared, we, Lord, have sinned. And Daniel was a good guy. But he uh, acknowledged that he was part of a community that was sinful. And uh, that's why in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us, to uh, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, not just as individuals, but, but as communities. The last point I wanted to reflect on this day, in the first temple, in the Hebrew Bible, in what we call the Old Testament, the great sin was idolatry. We're constantly making idols of stone, carved images, and, and, and worshipping foreign gods. And in the second temple period, in the New Testament, the problem that we're tackling with is greed. Because we've been taken away into exile, and we had had time to think and to contemplate by the rivers of Babylon we sat down and we wept when we remembered Zion. We contemplated why, what have we done that drove God away? And we repented. And we cast aside our idols. We were told by the prophet Jeremiah to build houses. We were going to stay in Babylon for a while. We actually became wealthy. It was the Persians who invented coin. The other people had money, but it was always done by weight, which is the word for shekel. So leshekel means to weigh. It was the, the Persians who invented what we today call modern money, and that refined the economy. Jewish people were present, and they learnt 
business skills, they became wealthy. When they returned, not everybody returned, many people stayed, and greed became part of uh, our problem. In Colossians 3, Paul very cleverly says that greed is idolatry. The problem is still the same. And for those of us that really appreciate our Jewish roots of our Christian faith, let's look at our communities. They're not always innocent. We should always look at our, at our communities first. Is there something that we're doing? Are, are we consumed with the, the, the world monetary system? Are we obsessed with uh, raising money and, 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 and building wealth when really we can't take it into heaven with us? We should store up treasures in heaven. So on this day, we should contemplate our communities, what idolatry we still maintain, what greed we still have, and cast it aside and return to the Lord. He wants to dwell once again with his people. Jerusalem will indeed have the presence of God back here. That is the promise, the prophetic promise from Revelation, that God will once again be in his city. And all the nations, the prophets say, all the nations will stream to Jerusalem for the festivals of Sukkot, Passover, and will be with the, the Lord. And so, my friends, and, uh, we contemplate this day, uh, read Lamentations, reflect uh, as an individual, but let's reflect also as a community. Let's hold on to the promises of God that he will remember his people. He has. He will remember us. He will. And, uh, and we can be restored to a beautiful, loving, faithful relationship that, uh, that is, is unstoppable. The kingdom of heaven will forcefully advance, winning more, more hearts, minds, souls for the Lord to rule and reign over. So come, come, Lord Jesus. Come swiftly and rebuild Jerusalem speedily in our days.